because I'm free. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Bourbon with Friends, uh, presented by Not For Long Media. Hey, hey, guys. Hey, guys. Yes. You yeah. like yes. fudge? I love fudge. The- www.fudgekitchens.com has the best fudge of all time. Go check I hear them they out. They ship all over the country too. They ship everywhere. And they Doesn't have salt water taffy. Oh. Doesn't matter where you are. www.fudgekitchens.com. Laffy taffy. No. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah. No. Paul here. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we are here. We have a special guest here today. Uh, this guy, he's so I learned right before the pod that he has the. 15th most viewed Instagram reel of all time, but that's not why he's here. He is the man behind the SIP Awards, which I'm excited to learn more about. Uh, Puya Hashemi is here today. Um, pleasure to have you on, man. Thanks for coming on the pod. How you doing? Thank you for having me. i um, doing great. Phenomenal. Great. Great. So, so um, yeah. I, well, hey, so I was looking at like the Instagram page of the SIP Awards and diving deep into exactly what you guys do, but you're the guy behind it. So why don't you kind of explain exactly what the SIP Awards is and what it consists of? And how kind of you got, like, how did the whole idea, you know, come about for you? Yeah. So uh, maybe about 15 years ago, I was selling and distributing spirits from around the world, from everything from Europe to, uh, from absent to tequila. And uh, I was bootstrapping that business it was very difficult, as you can imagine. We were competing with some of the biggest companies. Um, and, and I was looking at different ways of marketing and getting our brands out there. So I looked into competitions. That's one of the ways to kind of feature your product uh, yep. and, and compete with some of the bigger boys. But as I looked into that, I saw that all the competitions had professional judges that were somewhat affiliated with brands. Um, you had brand ambassadors in the judging seats. You had brand owners. You've had friends of brands in there. And you're like, well, you know, for me to submit my tequila, um, when we're competing with another tequila company and, and they, got, they got a seat at the judging table, it doesn't, it, it felt there was, there was potential bias there, right? So I was, I was thinking of the idea of what if there was a competition where you only had consumer judges, only where there wouldn't be anyone in the, uh, in the industry involved. And that's where SIP Awards kind of started. And I threw, out, threw around the idea to a few friends and most, of, most people I threw around the idea they were like, well, I don't know if that's gonna work. Like the average Joe competition in a way. Um, I just I just went ahead and did it. And uh, originally the first year we had about 70 brands compete, which is a pretty decent number of brands from all over the world. And it's been gradually increasing year over year. Uh, now this year, 2022 is our biggest year ever. We had over 1200 brands and these are brands from big and small, everything from being global, uh, Brown Foreman, uh, and, and to smaller mom and pop brands that are just literally starting this year. Uh, so this kind of showed me that initially the first year was there might be a path to this. There might be an interest level for the brands and consumers really took in amongst themselves to value what we were giving out as far as awards to judge what kind of spirits that they would want to pick up and purchase. Cause it, it back, you know, going back, I feel the consumer opinion is probably one of the most important when it comes to marketing and yeah. when you're making that decision. It's kind of like when you're looking on IMDb and or Rotten Tomatoes and it's like critic score, 35%, audience score, 95%. I'm going with the audience score 100% every time, of the time. Every time. Yep. Like they did that. They did that with Batman versus Superman. And it was just like, dude, this movie rocks. Like, the well, ultimate edition, the ultimate edition. Ultimate exactly. Edition. And and to that point, the critics, it, it's a much smaller field, right? You got probably, I don't know, maybe 10 or 20 people um, making that decision. Whatever their criteria is, whatever their background is, how does that compare to thousands or hundreds of thousands of people evaluating a particular movie in that scenario? Um, yeah. And, yeah. 
So logistically, how does it work? Like, you know, getting, is, is there, do you like vet the people that are judging or is it just kind of just like sign up and we'll send you sand? Like, how does that part work? Yeah, we've, we've kind of manipulated and changed the, the method over the years to kind of the, the, the most important role is making sure that the consumers that are coming in aren't either experts um, within the industry. Also, we don't want novices that drink once every five years either. Uh, So we want that kind of in the middle, uh, you know, drinking on the weekends or drinking once every, uh, just your regular consumer judge. Um, Those are the valued judges that we're trying to bring in. So every judge that wants to enter in the competition, they kind of fill out a little survey and we evaluate each one. We take in about anywhere from, depending on the year, 300 to to 400 judges uh, to bring in and to go through the the different different product line. And are all these people like- That would eliminate us, by the way. We're eliminated officially from being a judge. I know, I was thinking, I was like, Well, check out your resume, do a little background search on you and see. Listen, all you have to do is see us us in a blind tasting and you'd be like, oh, that's not, that's a little bit above novice and a little bit above average. Plus Connor drinks every day, so. I haven't drank today. And we're a little biased. I'm not that biased. We we, we, we tend to like bourbon. Well, I do at least. (laughs) Well, that's that's, that's another category. I mean, in within the survey, if you got a survey, we would we would want you to choose what type of category of product you would want to taste. Right. If if you hate tequila, if someone hates tequila, we're not going to serve them tequila. Right. (laughs) Me. Um, Exactly. Me. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, we would all suck to me. I'd be like, no, we don't want to create a torture chamber kind of scenario. We want to we want to give you the products that you're normally familiar with and you're happy to kind of it it should be a fun event. Shouldn't be a um, an extreme scenario or or you want to create an experience, too, for the judges that are that are that are judging. Right. Oh, yeah. And and what what's happened is Sip Awards has kind of become two different, almost two different companies in one. Um, there's the whole brand side and getting an award and marketing it to the world and, and really um, increasing your brand value. But for the judges, it's a whole different thing. They see it as, wow, this is really cool. I get a little kit. I go through products completely blind and understand what my palate likes and doesn't like. And then I can get the results and actually go to the store and pick up those products. So most of our judges really see the value in that because they can't replicate that experience um, very easily by themselves, you know, to, to get this unique kit and to go through um, a tasting experience and really kind of understand what products they like and don't like. I feel like we could maybe put the bourbon with friends award level in an awards show because it would be awesome it's very simple it's either fuck no fuck yeah or i'd hit it that's the way we judge <laughs> whiskey around here exactly yeah so that's how yeah so that yeah that, no that's right it's I like a that. gold that's silver that's and bronze called. like you could just go through it that way yeah i mean we we it's the same point we we don't make it over complicated so we have like a score of one to five so yeah you're Fuck yes is five. There your you fuck go. no is one. Yeah. And, um, it is three. Everything else is just kind of it in the is, middle. Is a three is in the middle. So, um, and you got a little bit of gradient in the in the in the side. We try so. not to, we try not to be boring when when we're grading whiskey. You know, let's just be real and raw. So right. when when you're when you're kind of doing that, like obviously you're not looking for a novice. You're not looking for someone who can probably pick out. I, I, I'm I'm assuming like you're not looking for someone who can put, pick out like what a mash bill might be what the proof is you're basically great grading off of someone who drinks, but it's off. Like, do they like it? Kind of an aspect. Like, are, is, is that's the person. So I, like, I, cause I think it's re- really interesting. Like there, I, I think it would be interesting if someone actually took it a step further into like somebody who is like in our world, right? Like we're, we're not tied to a brand. We're not brand ambassadors, but we have, you know, we have well, knowledge of like, well, that ex- except for Shannon, Shannon would be eliminated. 
but like has like that extra level. Like it would be really curious to see how that would go compared to like a normal consumer. I think in some ways, right? Like it plays, you know, you have your, I think you have your, your, your people that fall into that category, but also that like step above. And it would be curious to see how the rankings played if it was a similar, I think it would probably be similar to be honest with you. Right. Yeah. When I, when I say we're not looking for like experts, I mean, we get, we get people that are like in their own sense, they're connoisseurs, right? They really value a specific category of spirits. And um, I mean, they're, they're emailing us three times a week, trying to make sure we're not going to miss them the, the, the following year. Um, those are like our hardcore judges that are, mm. that absolutely love what we're doing every day. And, and they keep recruiting more of their friends and judges, um, into the competition. And I would consider them kind of expert level, but they're not affiliated in any shape or form gotcha. within the industry. And that's, that'll balance it out for us. Right. Um, and we have different ways of determining who's a good judge and who's a bad judge. Um, and we can get into that as well. And those are those are some things that we've kind of picked up along the way. But yeah, it's 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 a matter of determining um, and getting a good field of the people that are the customers for these brands at the end of the day. So do the do the judges pick what spirit they want to judge? Uh, what to, what category? They'll pick the category. Right. Well, so like if they, they want to judge a a gin or a wine well, they or a enter, whiskey. Or... Right. So like a, a brand will enter to win, right? Like it's not like, so, so the way I, I know it, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, like a brand will enter their spirit into a competition. It's just like anything else, right? Like you want to get like the best cookies at the state fair, you enter your cookies. They don't just come here. Mamma makes the best cookies. We're going to get Mamma to come in there. Right. Like, so they enter and then that goes in and I'm sure they have to send like samples and things like that. Now you do it all blind or do they actually know what they're tasting? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so yeah, the brands basically submit uh, two bottles uh, for the evaluation. They also send in an entry fee to enter. Not all the brands will win an award about 15 to 20% of them in any given year um, will come back with nothing. So even a bronze medal for a brand is pretty valuable and a big impact for their, you know, what they're, what they're planning to do with it. Um, and then in terms of the competition, that's one of the key factors of the evaluation process. We try, we, we put a lot of effort into making sure that there is no traceable way of being able to determine what these brands and these labels are um, that the products are being tested on um, so or tested with. So yeah, everything is completely blind. And the only thing you're getting is this kind of vial um, that's got this uh, spirit in it. Well, you get label this, bias. It's got, yeah, label or brand bias. That's a huge factor, right? You don't want that exposed to the judges. So we just have numbers. Um, the only, the only, uh, item that they would understand or the judges would see is the category. So for example, they would know it's a uh, Reposado tequila, uh, but they wouldn't know what brand it is or what age it is or what, so, what anything about it is. Anything like, about it, right. From like bourbon, would it be like single barrel, barrel proof, rye, single malt, American single malt? Do you do it based off like craft? Uh, things like that like do you get that granular or does it all kind of go whether it's craft or like a you know the big five are they all in one category it really comes down to how many get entered into a category sometimes we okay. do have to kind of uh, uh, condense them into it. Uh, it but as we've grown year over year it's it's becoming easier and easier to, to kind of be more granular and separate out especially the whiskeys um, even gins, we started out with just one category of gin. Now I think we have eight different categories of gin. Um, and, and right now we're over a hundred and I think 10 categories in total um, that a brand can submit. So it's, it's pretty detailed. Uh, everything from, I mean, things that you wouldn't even know about, or I didn't even know about. And every year we're like noticing new categories just popping up and 
We're trying to make, and, and we open it up and then we're like, whoa, we got eight submissions in here. That's interesting. Hmm. That's cool. Well, I, I, look, I don't drink anything but like whiskey. Uh, Shanda. Same. Her, yeah, okay. Miss Fireball and red wine in your former days. In my former life. I don't care. <laughs> Not awesome. anymore. I I've left that I girl Meta behind. Michelle. I, I hey, hey, do you ever do like any crisscrossing of stuff? Like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I know award shows are, are not award shows, but award uh, companies and stuff. I, I wonder what it would be like to get a bourbon person to like try rum and a rum person to try tequila, just like to have you could, like almost like an off, an off the wall award of like, who, we, you know, then like say someone like myself who's a bourbon drinker. These, this is the best rum that a bourbon drinker like, you know, like, and I know like, the, it, and I don't think it's not taking it seriously. I think especially in like the realm of what you're doing, I think it would be interesting because there's people like myself who struggle with trying other spirits just because, um, and then like all every now and then you get talked into something like just recently I had a Mescal old fashioned and it was delicious, but it must the guy, smokiness behind it. Yeah. But somebody talked me into it because he liked whiskey it was the bartender he's like listen i drink whiskey a lot this is that i think it would be an interesting crossover for other spirits to, to get more drinkers who may not be into that spirit to try it um yeah i don't know how that would logistically work but i think that would be kind of an interesting subplot within something like this yeah that's actually very interesting you brought that up we we've tried well, well i mean we're always looking at kind of uh disrupting the field of spirit competition or or just competitions in general um we've kind of opened up different ways of of um, evaluating spirits and getting new judges outside the field so we're kind of innovators in that sense but we're always trying to stay one step ahead um, as other competitions may kind of replicate some of the things that we're doing one of the things we we did a few years ago was kind of a a fun kind of a YouTube video. We never unfortunately published it. I wanted to make sure, and we wanted to kind of have a few different series, but it's in some sense, it's kind of what you're talking about. We put uh, a couple, whether they were together or just two guys or, or a guy and a girl um, with good dynamics. Some of them were like really taking it seriously. Some of them were more party people um, and just have them try to determine what they're tasting, what brand goes with what. So we had some of the top brands like, you know, um, everything from Grey Goose to Smirnoff and, and different flavors. And then they would have to individually kind of choose and win different prizes. Kind of like, you know, what you'd expect on a fun YouTube video. Yeah. Um, so I thought That's that, fun. and and yeah. I we, just thought of a really stupid name for it, but I'm not going to say it because it's dirty, but it's funny. I think you should say it. Hey, what's in my mouth? <laughs> what you should call it. What's in my mouth? So, yeah. Uh, I feel like uh, we should do a segment on Bourbon with Friends called What's in My oh, Mouth. Oh, that would be so fun. That would be you I guys, would love that. We just randomly send samples to people and we're just going to yes. say what's in my mouth. People should send samples to us and we will totally do that. I will. No, I'm going to send. No, I want to send them to just that. random people. I don't trust other people to send stuff. Yeah, no. <laughs> but like, yeah, that, how funny that. would that be, right? Like you're doing like a YouTube series called What's in My Mouth and here you have like multiple people and people would like, the funny people would make it even more funny because they're like, I don't know, John, what is in your mouth? Is it less sour than what you're used to? You know, I, you know, like, <laughs> it would be hilarious. I love that name. I might steal that name. If you're not going to do it, someone's got to do it. We you could guys collab, do it. We could collab it, you know. Like, all right, done. I mean, you know, we could always like be like the 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 on screen person that's laughing and encouraging the shenanigans. For yes. sure. No, but, now I want to revisit what we filmed. I we did like a whole day of shooting. We probably got a good amount of footage. I mean, some of it was hilarious, as you can imagine. When you have alcohol and just fun people, some funny shit comes out of it. So do, um, all, do welcome all the to our judges, podcast. <laughs> do all the judges co go to one spot and do this, or are you sending samples out? Yeah, that's interesting you say that because prior to 2020, um, we would have these big events. Uh, I mean, we we held them any everywhere from uh, LA to Las Vegas, at 
Aria Hotel to um, uh, the St. Regis to Hyatt Hotel in Newport. We kind of switched it every time to get a new demographic of judges. And we would have a DJ, we would have ice sculptures, we would have cocktail, like mixologists teaching things. Fuck, how do I get into this party? Oh, right. Was... I'm like, why? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Maybe we we show Con- up and we're Connor we need might to be actually there. have to Connor might actually have to shave and shower and show up. Oh yeah. And people would fly in just to come I would. and and to be a judge. And it was beyond just I mean the whole idea was to create the uh the the specific use case of where you normally sip spirits right um not to do it in a sterile like in a lab coat in a laboratory um you're doing it in a in a fun atmosphere kind of thing that you're you're getting your friends and family kind of involved i feel Um, like we would thrive in that situation i feel like that would be that would be a thrive yeah i would find a microphone it was a blast it was a blast um but yeah so that was prior to 2020 2020 came around and i'm sure we all know what happened there. Uh, events were banned. Uh, the world kind of stopped. Uh, and we're like, oh, we, I mean, the whole business was, you know, w- what are we going to do? We can't even have people were like emailing us saying you can't you can't do this. You can't do an event like that. Again, that's that's endangering people's lives. So we're like, don't uh, come then. What's that? Don't go then. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I mean, 2020. You, well, in 2020, you'd probably be on. It, it's like <laughs> you'd it's be on, on thing the front freedom, page. Well, you'd have who knows what would have happened. So, yeah, I mean, it, it was actually an interesting thing that came about it. Where like we're getting a lot of brands. We're getting a lot. Um, the more brands we also have, the more judges we need. Mm-hmm. So we needed to figure out a way to kind of uh, scale the business as well. So that year was the first year we decided to pivot and offer these kits rather than doing an event. We would send out these, these like uh, special kits that would come with a neat glass. Are you guys familiar with the neat glass? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you would get one neat glass, you would get 12 spirit samples in like vials sealed. Uh, and then you would get a little bit of a, a palate cleanser coffee beans, uh, sip awards pen, you get everything you need. Would you do that by hand or would that, where the comp would the brands have to provide them pre, um, like pre sampled out already? Oh, we would have to pour. No, no, no. So, uh, the brands would just send us the bottles okay. and then we had in our facility, we would pour each bottle into these vials. Then we would seal them. Uh, and 2020 was a big year to make sure everything was kind of clean and cleansed right. and perfectly um, shipped out. And, and we wouldn't ship it, actually. We would hand deliver them um, because we would just focus on the t- three counties. Luckily, we're based in Orange County. That's in between L.A. and San Diego. Um, right. So we would deliver those, and then they would have a video instruction on how to go through the process. And it, and it worked out even – I mean, it wasn't as fun as the event, but – the, the judges were really uh, taking up, I mean, we had judges that would do uh, virtual like Skype or Zoom parties, right? Or Zoom happy hour. And they would get their whole friends and family on Zoom and then they would go through it together. It goes kind of like what we're doing here in a way, uh, but with so fun. samples. Way less sober than if you're in Vegas with an ice sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun for 2020, I guess. Um, <laughs> And then uh, we would even a little bit towards the end of 2020, there would be uh, people going out and doing like block party or like, you know, like um, neighborhood kind of block parties or garage kind of situation where everything would be outdoors. They would have everything set up and they're, they would have lounge chairs and they would go through it in a group of like 20 people. Um, so it was very new and interesting, but what that, allowed us to do is now in, in 2021, we did the same thing, 2022, again, we replicated that. What, what that allowed us to do before we can only get about 120 judges, because the more judges you have, also imagine each judge getting so many samples, mm-hmm. it's a crazy amount of back end work you're going through and you're pouring 
uh, like 30 of these samples for each judge in a four or five hour period while you got food and entertainment. It, it's, it's pretty, yeah. it's fun, but chaotic. Um, this allowed us to kind of control that and allow more judges, which made the results a lot more accurate as well. Huh. Yeah. This, so, yeah, like so are logistically, you doing that it just seems. Or... I'm sorry. What? Are you still currently doing that, or have you kind of got? We're back still doing. We did that this year as well. Uh, so we did this year. We had over 400 judges, um, which you know wow. we couldn't have done that with an. We can. It just takes a lot more manpower to do that, and it's in a way. What I want to do in the future is do that with maybe a, a an event. Um, to some degree, because there are spirits and there are some products that we still have to hold an event. So the ones we ship out are just pure alcohol, um, but there are categories like the mixer competitions or mixer products that we can't just simply send out with a little sample and you're tasting a little bit of a Bloody Mary mix. Right. It's, it's not going to do it justice, especially it's got to be, you know, it's got to be going back into a spirit to get the full essence of it. So for those, we do little miniature events. Um, in the future, I think 2023, we might be opening it up to another uh, another event with potentially in the, in the horizon, looking at more of like a cocktail event, maybe like a festival slash expo where brands and consumers can kind of join in, not really competing, but just educating. What time of year do you generally have your awards? Uh, so towards the first first or second quarter of the year. So we're okay. uh, around May is oh. where we kind of target. Okay. You get a lot of releases in spring and stuff. And late fall, early spring seems like the two big release dates, at least for whiskey. So you would probably get yeah, a lot and, of that. and sometimes we get uh, brands submit a product that may not have yet entered um the you know the market yet um and they want an evaluation first and they want to see if they can get some accolades prior to going to market so they're kind of coming in full force so what are you what kind of drinker are you like what what are you drinking in your uh in your spare time uh i i don't drink that often but when i drink it's ideally i i pick out probably a whiskey yeah if i drink a lot i would uh i wouldn't be a lot i mean i have so many samples it's it's ridiculous our warehouse is full of you know spirits from around the world luckily i'm not an alcoholic if i was i'd be dead for sure i'd be dead four <laughs> times over <laughs> my kind of guy <laughs> So yeah, I, I, I really whiskey, only drink so. socially or when someone's drinking. I'm not the kind of guy that just like has to pour something and drink while working, luckily. Um, Listen, I'm oh, a I dad. do that all the time. On a Friday or a Saturday <laughs> night, I'm drinking whiskey when my kid goes to sleep by a fire and cigars. Because that is my zen moment. There you go. You gotta, that, is, you... that is how I just relax. Yeah, what, kind of, what kind of whiskey? What kind of whiskey do you reach for? 12. What kind of whiskey do you reach for when you're drinking? Oh, you're, you're trying to get me in trouble with the brands. No, no. Any, <laughs> whatever is closest to me that has a SIP Awards medal on it. Um, okay. So no, actually, that's How about a, that? A, Not a brand. What type? Single yeah. barrel, barrel proof, rye. I'm you not, I, I would say, you know, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super picky. Rye, rye works with me. Um but it's, it's interesting you, you mentioned which whiskey. So a, a few years back when I was first starting, probably, you know, maybe five years, six years ago, um, I, would, I would take it upon myself whenever I would go to the bar or restaurant and I'm ordering something, I would only order a brand that has won a sip of works. Um, and if they didn't have it, I wouldn't drink. And if there was a product that I wanted to try, I would market directly to them or I would have my people to kind of specifically reach out to them. And that made me like, okay, I got to get more brands because this, this bar doesn't have it. So now, now it's like almost every brand has it. So that was like an incentive for me to like, and I would just be like, oh yeah, that brand, I can't have that. No, 
Oh, what, what are the, okay, that one's got gold medal or I would look it up. Yeah. That's Detail. commitment. <laughs> yeah. That Research is. and development right there. Yeah. You got to believe, I guess you got to believe in your own product, right? And like, oh, that, that hasn't been evaluated by our judging panel. Nah, uh, I can't, I can't Get have that, that out of my face. Just I'm push too, it out. I'm too like, I'm, I'm too curious and I would just be like, I really want to try this. I mean, what if it was shit? And you're like, I'm glad they haven't put in for a medal. They wouldn't win anything. <laughs> that would be me. I'd be like, ha, ha, good thing y'all didn't put in. Then when you saw him, you're like, ha, ha, damn. <laughs> True. Like when yeah, a terrorist that's... gets to the pearly gates. How'd you get here? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't understand that joke. <laughs> it's the oh, damn, oh, I shit moment. Get I don't fine. get that joke. Whatever. <laughs> That went right over my head. I'm not gonna it's lie. Easy because you're short. I I I just fake laughed. <laughs> I understood that joke. Uh, it's cool. You've had, you know what you know what like a lot of faking is to your face. You've seen it in your real life, so at least you know how to do it. Well, back. Good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's a lot of words. I just listened to like half of them. I understood half of them. It's okay. So. <laughs> Let's Shannon, talk about this. Let's talk Shannon about this Instagram reel. I want to talk about this reel real quick. No pun intended. Ha ha ha. So, and I don't even know how to bring this up, but like, I just think it's crazy that out of all the reels, like how many reels have we posted, Paul? How many have I posted? Okay, Shannon, let's be honest posted? with you. It's like, we have never posted a reel where we handed Amber Heard a tissue and magically money came out of the TV back. All right. Not that has never happened. <laughs> I know that, but like, but what if out of all the reels, it, we could do it and a bottle of whiskey came to us. I bet we'd probably get a, you know, I bet we get a couple hundred thousand likes out of that. Probably. There's an idea yeah, right but there. Out you'd of get, all the reels. You'd have to do Johnny Depp though. Yeah. Oh, that would be the it, best. He's a happy hour every, anytime. I mean, yeah. What he said, wow. that, I laughed so hard. I'm just like, bro, like this is my guy right here. Like I can, I can get down with him anytime. Was there was so a lot real. of interesting, there was a lot of interesting things in that trial. Like you could just watch it, just the whole thing for entertainment value. Um, there was a lot of stuff. I would always Lots. like at work on TikTok, like I would be going through TikTok or whatever, Instagram would be a live feed. I'd be like, I'd watch it for like 15 minutes at a time, just like, cause I wanted to see. And then like going on your for you page, and like the highlights, like just dominated everyone's. It was like every single person in the country was just so committed to this, you, th this thing that meant nothing to anybody. Do you like, ever think they were no... laying in bed one day and said, Hey babe, you want to fuck with some people? And like, they just put this whole show on because it would be the most genius shit ever. Like you want to get no. divorced and act like we hate each other. We'll sue each other a couple times. And then all of a sudden we'll go to trial. It'll be a Like it was so outlandish. I don't know. That'd be pretty fucking expensive. I know. <laughs> right. I mean, think about the publicity <laughs> they've gotten. Like Johnny Depp's like going around the world selling concerts out now. Right. He's going to, I mean, well, he, I he think might he get Captain that, Jack, no? but he might get Captain Jack back for 301, not 300, 301 million dollars. Yeah. Well, and, uh, and all lucrative. to me. Yeah. True. Exactly. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> but my well, my overarching thing is, out of all the reels I post on Instagram, yours is has been viewed. It's the number 15 highest viewed. And that's insane to me. How many Does views Instagram, is it at? Instagram, hold on a second. Does Instagram, like, come to you and tell you that? Or do you just, did you have to be like, holy shit, this has a lot of views. I want to see if this there's, like, a ranking. Oh, the ranking? I, I looked it up actually online. Uh, there's websites. Just type in like, you know, most viewed reels. And then there's like a ranking. Kardashians are up there. I actually beat one of them. Just I think she was at 82. Yeah, just slightly. Hey, like, my guy. <laughs> um, I think she has other ones, though, that are higher. That are um, higher. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's there's. Uh, yeah, there's there's a ranking system. I don't know how accurate it is. It's not like an official awards. It's not like a SIP awards. <laughs> I actually Play got a shit out of it, bro. Anything. I'd I'd find all I'd find it till I was in like top five and be like, hey, this website said I'm top five. Screw it. There you go. Yeah. No, it's it's definitely awesome. It was, and you get you get recognized. I mean, like we talked about, most people have seen it. 
And when, as soon as I showed to them, they're like, oh yeah, I've seen it. I, my, my dad sent it to me or whatever. And I'm surprised. It's like, even though it has a subject matter of, you know, uh, allergy medicine, uh, <laughs> uh, it, everyone's sharing it. Uh, Trump shared it uh, when it was hilarious. at its peak. Yeah, Trump shared it, which was, that, that's one of the ones that I would get a lot of messages. And like, do you know who just shared yours? Like, oh, wow. Everyone hey, was sharing. It was. It was I, I, I'd be dumb if awesome. a former president shared my shit. I'd be like, ah. it was. It was his son, though. Oh, Maybe well. in the future, he'll be the there next president. Um, <laughs> it, it was very. I mean, when you like, did you just wake up the next morning and and open up your notifications, just be like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, it was. It, it didn't take off immediately. It. Um. So I did one before that which was, I don't know if you guys seen it. It was one that I handed her uh, my handkerchief and I tried to kiss her. Did you see that one? Yes. So that's the first one I did. And then I would get, and everyone was like, wow, this is good. And it got a few thousand, maybe 20,000 views. And then that slowly started to pick up. And then the comments were like, oh, you supplied her with the, the cocaine. Oh, you're her dealer. And then everyone was just like saying things like that. I'm like, what if, what if I like took it to that, you know, that, that direction? level, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I could probably, you know, make it more, yeah, more of that. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to give it, okay. I need to cash back. I need to count that. I need to check. And then the more I looked into it, I'm like, oh man, I can play with this and mess with this. Yeah. And it was just like expanding more and more. And then and then I put it out. Well, I made it. Yeah, I put it out. And a lot of people were like, whoa, this is way better than the first one. This is great. And then it, you know, went from 20,000, 50,000, maybe 100,000. And I'm like, wow, this is going crazy. And then, and then at one point, it was just hitting millions. Every like day, it would do 5 million, 10 million. There was one day, it did like 16 million in one day. Which, which is insane 16 million a day was was hitting the like that was the peak and how I far like, how long after it hit 16 million from when it actually happened uh it was a while it was like maybe two and a half weeks or something from when like well, that was actually part of the trial right uh no it was towards the end of the trial which which i was nervous about i'm like oh man the trial is ending soon it's not going to play well, but the, the, I think one of the reasons it was so successful is I try and kind of make content on my personal kind of Instagram slash influencer page, whatever you want to call it, is 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 content without a, a language barrier, right? There's no, you don't have to understand English to understand what's going on in the video. Um, so there was... There was a significant amount of people from Turkey, from Iran, um, people that couldn't even speak English, and they were writing in their native language, Brazil, um, that were messaging me. And it was, it was my stats were showing these countries were like really sharing it a lot, aside, aside oh, wow. from the US. So even outside the trial, I think the video was just kind of funny and cool um, because, you know, people in Istanbul, Turkey, I'm sure some of them knew about it, but some of them were just like, oh, this is hilarious. I got to show my, my grandma this video or whoever. Um, so it, it, you know, the, the, the more, the, the, if you don't have a language barrier or specific language, I think you can have a higher potential of going viral. And, and obviously this kind of happened here. It's awesome. Yeah, it was, internet, it was awesome. the internet is fucking up because you're it's it's not on here. I'm trying to look for it. And yours would be at least according to the first website that popped up, at least number twelve. Oh, but there you go. It's it's not on there. It's not on there at all. You need to email I them. I, I yeah, some of those are they're not doing their job. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. <laughs> they're nothing like the SIP awards. You guys aren't legit. There you go. There's an idea <laughs> for you. If you want to make a, a, a and that's easier. You just have to go with the number of uh, views and put it on your website. Maybe charge a fee or something. Um, yeah. There's there's a uh, a gap in the market right there. Yeah. 
Yeah, because yeah, number fifteen has fifty four point nine million, and that's that's child's play. You you blow that you blow it out of the water by thirty million. So oh, I did like, that in my sleep. Come yeah, on, exactly. Man. Literally. Come on, <laughs> people out here playing. They don't have wait till wait till Shanda go, gets in the bourbon with friends bikini though. That's gonna do stupid numbies. At least one hundred and five million. <sighs> <laughs> well, I'm always looking to cal- collaborate with different. Are you an influencer <laughs> yourself? Me? Us? Yeah. Oh, Chanda. Geez. No. Or any any one of you. I, I would mean, not. Page co- has, I would not. We have twenty thousand followers. I guess that counts. She goes. She goes. I don't know. <sighs> Only on OnlyFans. Oh, okay. <laughs> no <It's a> secret. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, that that's been, and I I started doing kind of funny, stupid, silly videos um, when the pandemic kind of hit. I wasn't, you know, Sip Awards was kind of still my other business, which is in technology, was not doing much. Everybody was just really out of work, and I wasn't. We we didn't. We just really no one was exchanging funds. No one was seeing a future. It was the end of the world. It's like yeah, the world has just stopped. And I'm like, all right, well, in that case, I'm going to make a fool out of myself and make funny videos and make people laugh. Um, There might not be a chance to do this again. So I started to make, you know, magic videos to funny videos, just videos to cheer people up. And then I kind of never stopped. Remember, um, uh, the guy from the office who was doing that like new show for like a little bit during the pandemic, Jared Krasinski, John Krasinski, not Jared, John oh, Krasinski. He's great. And, and he was doing like that, that like good news, like show from his house for a little bit. And then he had Steve Carell on and everybody freaked out because it was Steve Carell. It was, uh, it was Jim and Michael all over again. It was, uh, oh man, I didn't see that. I should watch. Yeah, that. I forgot what he, I forgot what it was, but he did it for a little bit. And I know like he had his kids on and it was all just positive news, like good things. And people <laughs> from all over would like submit stories of like things that were happening during lockdown and like good, like positive things. And like all he did was play it the whole time. And he did like a 30 oh, minute fun. news show and he sat and he used his kids like crayons and stuff to like, write things and had his kids like do drawings for the shows it, it was pretty cool i didn't see that well is, is he still doing that or no more i don't think he is anymore i haven't seen it i mean obviously he's too know, busy we, dying as mr fantastic in 20 we, minutes we, we, we went we went um we went back to our negative asshole american selves real quick <laughs> well even even the daily shows were doing something like that we're filming in their own home um right everybody was just and and that was the time to if you were going to launch your kind of online present that's a great time to kind of get followers and um everybody was just sitting it was called some good news (laughs) um and he had i don't think he had many episodes i'm looking on youtube right now i don't think it went that long but it had a lot of point, things happened from the pandemic. He had 15 videos and he had 2.4 million subscribers. Wow. Dang. And he stopped. Yeah. And they did a whole office cast that did a reunite for it as well. Like the whole office cast did a Zoom together. Wow. That's fun. How did you guys do during the pandemic? I'm sure it was better than usual, right? Oh, well, that's, that's when we started. started. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. That's we how it started. started. See, there's there's definitely good things that came out of it. There was a lot of podcasts and influencers and things like that that started because there was not anything else to do. And then it's interesting now that like the world kind of got back to normal. Some people have just fallen off a cliff. Uh, You never know several people anymore. Yeah, several people that the world that it was our who we talked to was a lot. And then it kind of just shrunk because, you know, just people just got busy back with their lives and stuff. Yeah. Well, Crazy it was time. probably oversaturated for what it, what it is. Except now. for Shanda. Shanda was bored and we saved her. More what? Shanda was bored and we saved her. Uh, <laughs> what were Shanda, you doing you before? Feel saved? Who, me or her? Shanda. Or all of uh, you, actually. <laughs> oh, I mean... I still, I mean, I still, still have a day job. 
we I mean we all do oh, we but all this is uh <laughs> this is the fun this is the fun part yeah i only give uh i'm only a dealer on the weekends myself <laughs> yeah <Right? laughs> nights and weekends jan only does only fans on tuesdays connor does yeah. them on wednesday does it on wednesday wednesdays but he has a thumb one it's weird just gives thumbs up and stuff yeah 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 no no it's it's a full-time business don't disrespect my business like that it's every day <laughs> and it's uh, it's 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 important that i mean you guys didn't give up that's that's critical like just like my mind didn't blow up during the pandemic either um and it's it, i get people reaching out to me like hey, I, I've posted a couple videos, you know, what's your trick? How come I haven't gone viral? Or, or friends are saying that, like, I don't know if I should post. And I'm like, how many videos have you posted? They're like two? Like, dude, I'm, I'm at 300 plus. Like it, 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 right. takes, it takes a good amount of work. Like, yeah, you're never, it's rare to just be, you know, batting a hundred every time. Um, some videos will hit, some of them won't. Some of them yeah, will I'm take a, a long time. As I'm, you excited guys when, seen it. I'm excited when TikTok hits like 10,000 views and 1,000 likes. I'm like, hell yeah. Viral as fuck right there. Well, that's that's great. TikTok is a lot easier to go viral. We have a, I had a, did a video and literally it's, it's thieving whiskey out of a barrel. I got 161,000 views. There you go. For nothing. That's always a 10-second video. Thief out in. Highest rated, highest viewed video we've ever had. It's crazy. Did you get a lot of uh, comments on it? Um, I don't know if we've had as many comments. So we have one that we posted with Sam Hewen, and it, we have like it's up to like thirteen hundred likes and three hundred comments, which is a lot. Um, I, I mean, know, you're I talking to the guy yeah. with the twelfth most views of all time in yeah, the history. Yeah, of we internet. didn't have thirty five thousand <laughs> comments. I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah so you can one thing is you can actually go in and, and see how many people shared uh like that mm -hmm. amber heard video had oh, nearly three million shares that's insane right um crazy like people pushing the share button four million likes anyway only so that video only has 595 likes and 20 comments so it's not even our most like video but it has the most views it has 163,000. But uh, what about shares? You would seven. only be able seven. 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 <laughs> I think what what happened was like, in, uh, or TikTok was like, let's give them a shot. Let's put them on the for you page. See what happens. The Sam then, Ewan one has forty nine. The one with Terry Bradshaw that's at fifteen thousand views and twelve hundred and seventy likes is at ninety shares. Nine. Okay. That's interesting. Yeah, TikTok is 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 very strange. Like some videos I'll post on TikTok and I'll be lucky to break 400 views whereas on Instagram I'll get like, like 40,000. Right? It's it's a whole different genre. Um well, but I do we can, we, we can really smash on Instagram sometimes. Like we have some videos that are pretty high on that. Well, you but, have a lot of TikTok followers doesn't. on Instagram. That's yeah. good. You don't need followers on TikTok to blow up. Um, Dude, oh my God. I see people, for some reason, I've been getting people on my For You page. <laughs> and it's like people with like 20 followers and they're just random weird dudes. And they're like, hey, ladies, I'm single. Hit the so this, like button if you want to go on a Terry date. Bra this Terry 20 Bradshaw, followers these people have. This Terry Bradshaw video on tic on Instagram has, uh, has 16,000 views. On Instagram, that's solid. On Instagram, that's not easy to get. I have, I haven't even, I didn't even like think about that or not. One thing, one thing we need to, uh, we're we're gonna probably do is uh, have Over a presence for it. sip awards for TikTok. I think that's that's a way we can <laughs> totally different. Maybe we need to find a good mixolog, a fun mixologist. We got him. Um, we got another one on there that's where Graham McTavish is making fun of Sam Hewen and it's at 15,000. 527 likes too. Like that's it is way harder to get stupid numbers on Instagram than it is TikTok. Way harder because because you're really dependent on your existing followers. Like you have no shot if you have under 100 followers to get massive numbers on Instagram. 
compared to TikTok, you could have one follower and uh, completely blow up. Yeah, like these people I see on my For You page. Hey, ladies, single guy here. Exactly. So this one followers. that I just this one I just posted, Connor, an hour ago is already up to four hundred views. Sick. I agree. I could care less about views. I don't know. Whatever. Just fun. post stuff that I like, and that's it. Yeah, I, I think that's that's the key because everybody, you know, I I think majority of everyone that I've talked to, like everyone's afraid of posting these days, especially when it's like outside their, their comfort zone. And you never know. Yeah. One of them will blow up. You got to just post like, who cares? No one cares. I always realize this. No one cares as much as you. You're thinking people are going to care. I agree. The the worst they're going to do is they're going to swipe up, go to the next one. Like, yeah. It doesn't have a thumbs down button. I mean, yeah, they're not going to sit there <laughs> and, and watch it over and over and be like, that guy is a fool. I can't believe he posted this. I want to watch it again and just make sure. No, they're, within the first three seconds, they're gone. They're, yeah, I agree. Or wow, this is like a social media lesson from, a, from I, like this, this one is of the great. top guys ever. Yeah, this is yeah awesome. just post. It's free. Every post is free. It's just fun. Post. Yeah, and if might. it takes off, then you get to have a good laugh at it. And then you can take another stab at it. And you probably have 10 videos that don't, then it'll happen again. Just like your, your one pouring video that you just mentioned, you had no idea it was going to be your best video. <laughs> I didn't even see it. Cause I have notifications turned off. I didn't log into TikTok for like three days. And then it had like, I was just like, it was what the hell just happened. And I looked and it was at like 47,000 views at that point. I was like, Holy shit. But like now, like we have like three that, we actually have three out of the last four that are in like the 15,000 plus that are starting. So like the notifications are starting to go kind of ham. We just got like a thousand followers on TikTok in like the last month. So Whoa. I know that's not viral, but that's. No, that's, that's solid. And, and you got to realize Thanks. the people that are following you are very niche to some degree. I'm sure if you looked at your demographic, it's, it's uh, a higher age group. It's not like 12 year olds. Hopefully, well, I hope, I hope so. to God not, because I'm going to get in a lot of trouble. But I, it is it is interesting, like people like if you ever go into like if you do stuff on Instagram, and you go into like your insights on like your followers, <coughs> seeing like what your trends are, what you're doing, like what countries follow you the most, like four points. We have. Four percent of our file followers are from the United Kingdom. And uh, all, the majority of our followers are between the ages of 35 and 44. There you go. That's on yeah. Instagram. Yeah, like my my personal is all, you know, fairly, yeah, in the 20s to 30s realm, majority of it. Um, but yeah, I've got much younger to much older. But on our SIP Awards Instagram, it's, it's like 0.2% mm -hmm. ages under 18, which is good. That shows that, you know, yeah. people that are following us are of drinking age and whatever. Um, but it's, it's fascinating to see the, the demographic of people. Um, yeah. The highest, the highest people online, and this is really interesting, is um, Thursdays. Or sorry, Wednesdays. Wednesdays has the highest percentage of our followers online. Mm. Huh. Whiskey Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Whiskey and Wednesday. Sixty-one percent of our followers are men, and thirty-eight point six are women. Oh, we're gonna change that. Gotta have more gal. Uh, what's the percentages? Sixty-one thirty. Sixty-one point three to thirty-eight point six. Mm. I don't know who the other like point zero one are. Uh, maybe they're. <laughs> <rabbits>. <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, that's another thing. Um, I, I, it's, as you, as you are aware, w uh, spirits are drank by, you know, pretty equally amongst all sexes. So, um, we, we were one of the first competitions to kind of have fairly close 50, 50 kind of ratio of judges, women and men. Whereas a lot of the other competitions were like, I'm talking 95% men and 5% women. Like you'd have one or two 
women judges and 40 male judges. And it was right. like, what is that? Is that who's buying these drinks? That's it. Um, so yeah, it's, it's important to kind of match with what the consumer is, what the real consumers are. I agree. I agree. I agree. On that note, uh, why don't you let the people know where they can find you in the SIP awards and honestly, how like to sign up to be a judge. Cause I want to know that too. Yeah. So, well, my personal account is, uh, at Hey Puya, H E Y P O U Y A. Um, and, uh, again, it's, it's not a ton of spirit related news. So if you're not into that, just go follow spin, uh, sip award. So there is spin a hot touch- girl in a bikini in one video though. So I can, I can at least say that I did see that earlier. Wait, there will be, there are, there, there is was, one? There, yeah. Yeah. Oh, you, she's like, take a picture of me real fast and like spritz. Oh, that one. Yeah. You know who that is. <laughs> no, you don't know who that is. Uh, uh-uh. come on. That's, uh, that's one of the Kardashians. Is it really? Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't follow the Kardashians. Oh, now everyone's going to be following me, uh, looking for that one video. <laughs> there uh, you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, for, for SIP awards, it's at SIP award, S I P A W A R S A wait, S I P A W A R D S. Um, and we're on Instagram mostly. The website is sipawards.com. If you're interested in entering your spirit, uh, if you go to the website, there's in- instructions and information. You can, uh, s- I would say, either entering the, the, the competition as a brand or a consumer, the best thing you can do is sign up for the newsletter at the bottom of the page, and you'll get emails and updates as, uh, as we approach you know, the, the, the competition dates. And for consumers, there's, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of options. And like I said, we might have events coming up, which will be really fun and interesting. So definitely sign up for the newsletter. Beautiful. Perfect. Awesome. Puya, thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. This has been a really fun show. Um, I'm glad we've gotten to talk some serious and also some shenanigans. <laughs> I did too. No, it was really fun. Yeah. What it's all about. Thank you to everyone for listening. And remember, a bourbon with friends can change the world. Let's go.